So this brings us to a lesson where we'll discover what happens when the collision is elastic in nature. Let's say you have two masses, one having a mass m1 and moving with a velocity v1 and let's say it's v1 initial and then you have mass m2 which is moving with a velocity v2 initial and the collision happens that is mass m1 rams into m2 and the velocities of both the masses change to v1 final and v2 final. So if the collision is elastic in nature, we can say not only the linear momentum is conserved, that is the sum of momentum of mass m1 and m2 before the collision is equal to the sum of the momentum of mass m1 and m2 after the collision, but also we can say that the kinetic energy of the system is conserved before and after the collision. Or in other words, the sum of kinetic energy of mass m1 and m2 is equal to the kinetic energy of mass m1 and m2 after the collision. So we can go ahead and write that m1 v1 initial, which is the momentum of mass m1 plus the momentum of mass m2 should equal to the momentum of mass m1 after the collision. So let's denote it with v1 final plus m2 v2 final. And we can also say that the kinetic energy is conserved. So half m1 v1 initial square plus half m2 v2 initial square should equal half m1 v1 final square plus half m2 v2 final square. So after the collision, the velocities redistribute in a way that the sum of kinetic energy of both the masses remains the same in elastic collision. Now, let's take a special case where mass m2 was stationary before the collision or v2 initial was zero. So equation one or this equation can be rewritten as, so you can see that we've dropped this term because v2 initial was zero and we can rewrite the kinetic energy equation as, so let's call this equation one and let's call this equation two. And if we rewrite equation one as this, and let's call it equation one A, and let's rewrite equation two like this, and let's call this equation two A. And if you divide equation two A by equation 1a and do a bit of algebra, what you'll get is v1 final is equal to m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 multiplied by v1 initial. And what you'll get v2 final as 2m1 upon m1 plus m2 multiplied by v1 initial. So let us examine three cases where the size of the two balls varies. So case one could be where m1 is much, much smaller than M2. So probably M1 looks something like this and M2 looks something like this. So we can say that M2 is much, much greater than M1. And if this is the case, so this is M1 and this is M2. So if this is the case, you'll see that V1 final can be written as approximately equal to minus M2 upon M2 into V1 initial, which therefore approximates to minus V1 initial. Because you can see that the numerator would be pretty much minus M2 because M1 is small and the denominator would also be M2 because M1 is very small. So we can see that V1 final actually equals in magnitude to v1 initial but in opposite direction and it makes sense also because if you hit let's say a very large rock with a let's say a tennis ball the tennis ball would obviously kind of return back it, it won't push the boulder but rather bounce back because the mass of the boulder is so large that the tennis ball would not be able to impart it much energy or much velocity. So let us see what happens to the velocity of mass m2. So we can say that v2 final is approximately equal to 2m1 upon m2 because m1 is so small that m1 plus m2 would be almost m2 into 
v1 initial and since 2m1 is so small and m2 is so large this value would be really very small so v2 final would be a very small value and it again makes sense if you once again consider the example of a tennis ball hitting a large boulder the boulder would hardly move now let's take another example where the two masses are of similar value so you have mass m1 over here and you have mass m2 over here which are almost of equal value in such a case you can see that velocity of mass 1 final v1 final would equal 0 and v2 final would equal v1 initial so to understand this consider the example of a cue ball in the game of billiards hitting another ball and if the collision is close to elastic what you would find is that the cue ball comes to a stop while the other ball rolls on with the same velocity as that of the cue ball now let's take another example where mass m1 is massive it's it's very large while or mass m2 is very small so what we've considered is this is m1 and this is m2 and m1 is much much larger than m2 so what you'll see is that v1 final is approximately equal to v1 initial because you can see that the numerator continues to be something like m1 only because m2 is very small and so does the denominator continues to be m1 because m2 is very small so the final velocity of the mass is equal to its initial velocity and if you were to find the final velocity of mass m2 what you'll get is 2 times v1 initial because the denominator m1 plus m2 is almost equal to m1 and therefore you get m1 m1 cancels and you get 2 times v1 initial velocity again you can almost imagine if a huge boulder rolls down and hits a tennis ball the velocity of the boulder will not change but most likely the velocity of the tennis ball would double.